What's up, big old Billy bitch tits? <laughs> Dude, I'm fucking crushing this diet, by the way. I am, uh, what, is, what is today? M- March what? Well, I'm recording on the 14th. Today's the 15th. I've been basically going veggie um, the entire time. And then like once a week, I have like a fucking cheat meal. That's it. So when I went out to that restaurant with my wife, I had a little bit of fish and I had half of a cheeseburger. But other than that, I've just been doing these uh, these bowls. I've been making falafels. I've been doing all of this fucking crap. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just learning. I just actually bought some shit for a stir fry tomorrow night. Um, I figure the worst thing that's going to happen out of all of this is I'll just have all of these new meals that I can make because I I still think I'm going to eat meat a little bit. Um, I'm just trying to go the whole month the best I can and uh, have had no booze. Obviously, I'm done with that shit. No cigars, no nothing. Um, And uh, this has been a long month. I'm not going to lie to you. All right. But as of tomorrow, I think we're almost halfway through it. All right. Best vibe music source. What's up, old big, big old Billy bitch tits. I'm 20 years old and I've been listening for a little over a year while at work. Oh, thank you very much. I heard you mention you wanted to know where to find good vibe music. Good man. I love it. And I have a pretty good one for you. There's a 24 seven live stream called chilled cow. Um, that's such an internet name. You know, it's always like that, right? It's always like the fucking, I'm trying to think of like a fucking internet name. Velvet Air, you know, <laughs> it's always like something that just doesn't exist. Chilled Cow uh, on YouTube. Um, where am I? On YouTube. And they have different moods and vibes to choose from. They're like Airwolf. Remember that podcast network? Airwolf. Like that was a perfect internet fucking name. Chilled Cow, Airwolf. Um, Okay. They're very well known and play good beats to just listen to. Hope you give them a shot. Thanks for giving me and my dad something to talk and laugh about. We love the podcast. That's awesome. I'm going to check out Chilled Cow right now. I'm going to have this in my computer here. Chilled Cow. Lo-fi hip-hop radio. Let's listen. Let's have a quick little listen. Let's take a sample. Wait, this is the end here. Let's get to the beginning. All right, that part right there, I like. All right, Bill, just relax. Everything's going to be okay. Wait, where'd the music go? What the fuck? I was just starting to relax. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now I have to hit rewind. This is not lo-fi. This is a fucking pain in the ass. I just rewound. See, this is usually right now where some fat chick starts singing. But I guess they don't. Is that lo-fi music? I don't know. All right, I'll check it out. Thank you, though. All right, uh, Greek vegan food. Dear Billy the Greek, uh, Greek food is underrated. I love Greek food. I like Greeks, too, man. Cool people. When I started eating plant-based, man, for a short period of times, this is what got me through it. Lots of foods don't feel like... They're trying to replace meat. Yeah, I hate that shit. I hate that shit. Just be a fucking vegetable. Stop trying to be something you're not. Uh, Here's the link with some of them. Okay, so this one's www.greekboston.com slash category slash vegan. I love when you click on it. It's like open link. Yeah, well, what the? Okay. All right. Simple Greek roasted vegetables. Recipe for vegan Greek stuffed tomatoes. Those look good. They were in season. Recipe for dolmades. I don't know how to say that. Stuffed grape leaves. You know, there's a great Greek restaurant out here. Recipe for Greek-styled fried zucchini. That seems like if you want to be the fat vegan. Uh, String beans. Anybody else want to try this shit? 
Greek style spinach rice, boiled greens. I got to tell you guys, is is <laughs> most of you be like, ugh, I don't eat that fucking shit. I will tell you this: that my one cheat week, uh, cheat meal for the week. After I eat it, I just sit there like, oh my god. I always feel like I have a boot in my fucking stomach now. Um, all right. HOA information. All right. This is a home. I keep forgetting what it's called. Home organization. This is like when your fucking neighbors all decide. HOA meaning. Why can't I remember this? Homeowner association. Yeah, this is like such a douchey fucking thing. I get it. I get it. If some degenerate gambler moves in and he had a fucking, you know, he hit on a couple of horses and then he wants to build a McMansion. I get it how you're trying to keep that shit from happening, but it also seems like it's a way to like control people or be su- and be fucking racist if you wanted to. I don't know. It just seems like uh, that could go sideways, you know? Who comes up with an HOA? I just, I'm so fascinated with controlling people. Like, just, you know, just fucking leave people alone. Like, this is our neighborhood, and we shouldn't have to fucking gang it, gang it, gang it, right? It's always some fucking douche running that fucking yap. Whenever I talk to somebody like that, I, I don't even hear them. I just sit there looking at their mouth. It's the fucking words are coming out. Just thinking of everything that you just, you know, grabbing a roll of duct tape. I always picture that. Just like ran on the head real quick. <laughs> All right. Uh, love the show and stand up. Thank you. I just listened to the March 8th podcast, 2021, and wanted to give you some HOA info. Homeowner associations can foreclosure on your property for unpaid dues, fines, or fees. Who comes up with these? Are they? Do you have to own a home in that, or is this just some extension of the bank? Uh, that caller needs to play ball with the HOA or move, as it's not worth losing your house. So there are a bunch of bullies that can take your house unless everybody has the same group thought. Is that what it is? If they, so you fucking, I own a house, and I, and if I don't think the way you fucking cunts do, oh my god. I love how people are worried about Big Brother. What about this shit? Uh, if they were to foreclose, the homeowner has the right in most states to redeem the property from the foreclosure. There are state guidelines that spell out the amount of time homeowners, homeowners have for redemption if applicable. Best of luck to you and your family and go fuck yourself. Uh, let's see here. Homeowner Association... Control. I'm trying to trying to find some sh- bad talk about. All right, controlling neighbors. Don't fight an HOA alone. HOA responsibility for neighbor to neighbor disputes. Let me see. HOAs. Our HOAs. Good. (laughs) Pros, a good HOA is a pleasure to work with and can increase your property value. Yeah, this all seems like code for racist and elitist and all of this shit. And you just know there's some cunt that fucking put it together. You just know it. Cons, a bad HOA can make your life miserable. In other words, if you don't fit into what's going to increase their property value, what they decided. Um, can make your life miserable and cost you time and money. A well-run homeowner association can be a blessing, a problem can be a nightmare. Are HOAs racist? Homeowners associations are still keeping black Americans out. Well, that didn't take long. All right. Fucking assholes. I hate people. I fucking really just, I just don't like them. You know, and I'm not singling out white people here, okay? There's the same HOA cunts in every fucking race. They just don't have the opportunity, you know, to do it yet and then be exposed for the cunts that they are. 
Um, all right, Buddha bowls. Hey, Billy, bald Buddha bod. <laughs> The bulls are called that, called Buddha bulls, because I think and that's going to be deemed offensive at some point. The bulls are called that because often in Asia, Buddhists are the vegetarians in society. Uh, if you are ordering food, you wouldn't say you are a vegetarian. You say you are a Buddhist to indicate you don't eat meat. Oh, love the show. Well, I would think at some point, because the alliteration, it's so much fun to say, Buddha bull, it would come off as like flippant. But Buddhists, they seem like the least offended. Let me see this. Uh, have, have Buddhists... I don't know how to spell it. I know there's an H in there. I just fucking saw it. Wait. B-U-D-D. Buddhists ever started a war. Every other religion... Buddhism and violence. But Buddhism, like the other great faiths, has not always lived up to its principles. Oh, Jesus. There are numerous examples of Buddhists engaging in violence and even war. In the 12th century? Jesus Christ. What have they done? Anything? What, what have you, who have you fucking killed lately? Boo, 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 hoo, 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 dis. All right. I'll look that shit up later. Uh, am I a dick? Weird neighbor issue. Uh, what does that say? I can't even... Billy Butter. Uh, love the podcast. Uh, it helped me stay sane when I was still working in the warehouse. Hope you're doing well. I am doing. I think I'm doing all right. Uh, so I kind of feel like a dick and need some advice here. Am I a dick or or reasonable? I bought my first house a year ago, and it turns out my neighbor is very annoying. Um. Uh, you know, in New York City, by the way, speaking of HOAs, they have like co-ops and like the co-op can decide whether or not you move into the building. I understand it, you know, because if you, you're going to because you bought there, you're going to live there. And if there's some loud douche, um, that's going to be a nightmare. But that's I don't know. It really opens the door to all that other shit. Anyway, since day one. Um, I already forgot what this guy said. Uh, I bought my first house a year ago, and it turns out my neighbor is very annoying. Since day one, anytime he sees me or the old lady outside or in the garage, he would come over with nothing to say or ask, really. There were times when he walked up the long driver's driveway so silently I wouldn't hear him until he was standing in the garage door. You Weird. Yeah, you can't have that. You cannot have that. And he walked over as my girl was sitting in her car waiting for it to warm up one day and scared the shit out of her. I like my alone time in my garage doing my thing. So right before winter, I had to tell him to stay off my property unless I invite him over. Exactly. Good man. He's friendly, but seems kind of off mentally. Yeah, this guy's fucking weird, dude. The second time I met him, he asked me to write a resume for him because he found out I'm a teacher. Then he tried inviting himself inside saying he always lived next door and wondered what the inside of our house looked like. Dude, you have a fucking stage four creep. Five being the highest number. This guy's like Goomer on fucking all, uh, F is for family. Also, when we were moving in, he walked over and asked if there was an upstairs to the house. Very awkward. He's in his 20s, and I feel bad because his parents brought over some vegetables over the summer. But I am a dick. But am I a dick for telling him to stay on his side of the fence? Thanks. Can't wait to uh, to come to a show when they start back up. And you're no, not at all. Not at all. You did the fucking right thing. The last thing you want to be is a nice person in that situation. You need to. Uh, you need to um, establish boundaries. And I hope that that guy is. Um, abiding by those things. I hope everybody in your house understands that that guy is off. And uh, it sucks that you live there, but there's no fucking way I, w- I would ever walk out of my house without having my head on a fucking, you know, swivel, whatever the fuck they call it. Keep your head on a, uh, keep your head on a swivel. Um, no, you are not a dick at all. You are not a dick at all. 
Uh, all right. Girlfriend has other boyfriend, according to her grandpa. Um, hey, Oily Bill Morrison. Hey, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cancel my fucking show right now. I'm starting to feel fucking sick. I did too much. I did too much today. Look at this shit. This is old Bill taking care of himself now. And I'm going to go right to fucking bed. And I'll be fine in the goddamn morning. But if I go out tonight, it ain't going to be a good thing. Right? This is what you do. You don't feel good. You fucking cancel your shows. You got a weird-ass fucking neighbor. Uh, Not going to be able to make it tonight. Suddenly feeling like I'm getting sick. Period. Not COVID sick. Period. Just cold sick. All right. And then that's it. I'm out. And I only said I was going to do the show today, so nobody was expecting to see me anyway. Okay. All right. Fucking great. Okay. Now I can just finish this podcast and go to bed. Be a smart fucking person for once. Look at this. Bill. Bill in March taking care of himself. All right. Girlfriend has other boyfriend, according to her grandpa. By the way, what I just did there is a really important thing to do for quality of life. It's something that I just used to plow through and I would get sick all the fucking time. Um, All right. Hey, old Billy Morrison. Uh, Did you see Riders on the Storm in the Desert? I've been wanting to take shrooms for the longest, but I've been too much of a pussy every time I have the opportunity. Anyway... Anyways, he says, I'm a 22-year-old college senior from Orange County. I've been doing what a guy should be doing in his college years as far as the ladies go, spotting red flags right away and getting out. That's good. Not getting too emotionally involved and having fun while also being upfront with these girls. That's the key. If you're just out there having fun, let them know because according to Sidney Lauper, girls just want to have fun. Like they, you know. They can be down for something like that, too, but you just got to make sure there's, there's, there's big gaps of time between seeing them so nobody gets attached and not trying to fuck them over. Good for you. I recently met a girl, and we've been dating for seven months now. She's awesome, and I've never connected with someone like I do with her. Well, that's right. That's good because you didn't get bogged down to a relationship. You waited until somebody special came along. That's what you should do. She's smart, funny, she's independent, and makes money, and her relaxed vibe matches mine. It's been great, and I think I'm finally starting to grow up as I found someone I can see myself with for the long haul. That's great. She's a promo model <laughs> and obviously gets a lot of attention. I thought you, I met this girl and she's a model. I can really see myself with her. That's good, dude. You got a hottie. Good for you. And obviously gets a lot of attention from guys, but I trust her and it doesn't bug me. That's good. She has a guy best friend who used to date one of her girlfriends. Kind of strange. Wait, she has a guy best friend who used to date one of her girlfriends. Kind of strange, but I didn't think much of it. They're really close and have been since high school. Oh, fuck. This is the guy she's going to marry, dude. I have a bad feeling. He's in the Marine Reserves and lives right by her. They've hung out once or twice while we've been dating, and she's always been up front about it, and nothing ever seems sketchy. However, I want to go meet her. Gra- I went to go meet her grandfather a couple weeks ago, masked up, obviously. And when she introduced me to him, he said, "Ah, so this is the Marine guy, right?" She said, "No, that's Aaron, my longtime friend. This is Zach, my boyfriend." He then laughed and said, "Damn, Miha, how many boyfriends do you have then?" Right away, she laughed and told him, "Her and that guy never dated like that. It's always just been friendly." Uh, when we left, I asked her what the fuck was up with that. She told me that her grandpa was in the Marines and he got excited when she told him that her friend was too. Apparently, they had never met before. Uh, The guy's over 90 years old, so obviously he's not all there, but he's definitely sharp for his age after talking to him. I tried to brush it off and give it time, but it's been two weeks now and I got to be honest, that shit is still bugging me. Well, dude, I got to tell you something. If you were fucking cool with her being hot and guys looking at her and it didn't bug you, but this bugs you, this is legit. You got to listen to your gut here. Her dog just passed away and I was with her all day and night when it happened. But as soon as I went back home, she said the guy was going to come over because he was close with the dog too. Dude, get the fuck out of this relationship. Get out of this relationship. I don't know, man. I want to believe her because 
I've been cheated on before in high school, and this doesn't feel like she's trying to hide anything. But at the same time, that shit with the grandpa is tripping me out. What do you think, Bill? Am I being paranoid, or should I just brush it off, brush off what happened as an old guy messing around? Or do you think this could be a red flag? It, well, dude, if it feels like a red flag, I would address it. Thank you, and I got to say your podcast kept, kept me from jumping out of my 12-story cubicle window when I had my shitty office job. LOL. Go fuck yourself. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't like the lay of the land there at all. I'll be honest with you. I don't like the lay of the land. And so I would just... Uh, uh, you got to sit down and talk to her about it and just say it bothers you. And well, what do you want me to do about it? It's just like, well, I mean, you know, I don't know. You've seen this guy all the fucking, I just, I don't know. I just think that's fucking weird. There's something fucking weird going on there. There's something re- that that whole fucking thing is really weird. She's the ex-boyfriend of one of her girlfriends. Now, what I don't understand is why didn't she just get with, if she if he was single, why, the this is something on your side here. Why wouldn't she just get with the guy? I mean, is he in the Marines, Marines, or does he do that weekend shit? You know? Like, how the, if he's in the fucking Marines, why is he around? Wouldn't he be deployed somewhere? I don't like it. You know what? You know what? I'm going to fucking, I'm going to phone a friend here. Any Marines out there? What is, what is your gut telling you about this? They're all laughing right now in some fucking godforsaken place. They're listening. Get the fuck out. That's what you're saying, right? Over in Afghanistan, you're listening, right? I bet they're saying, get the fuck out. Dude, um, you need to address this. You definitely need to address this. Um, I don't like it. I'm not saying she's guilty, but there is definitely, uh, if this was the cops, they would get a warrant at this point. There's enough here that (laughs) for a warrant, you might not find anything. The alibi might check out, but this is definitely, uh, this is something that, uh, perking the old ears up there. Um, Anyway, so uh, what else? I played with my daughter today, man, and my son was awesome, as always. My daughter's still, uh, she's get, she's got the bike down as far as, like, I just don't have a big enough driveway where she can, like, you know, ride around. So I got to take her to the park. It's something I want to do. And uh, just do that for, like, two, three days in a row. Just let her get it down. Or I got to find some place where we can both go. Um, you know, I just don't like doing it after she went to school. She comes out of school and she's just like, all right, I don't need to learn anything else. I just want to come home, have something to eat, watch Bugs Bunny or some shit. So I try to respect that because I loved that when I was a kid. You know, walking home. Sometimes I used to take the bus. Most times I used to walk and just joking around with my friends, you know. And then getting home, and I grab like I'd either make a steak em when I was older. When I was younger, I'd have like a powdered donut, some sort of shitty fucking food. We always had like Twinkies. And <laughs> it was the seventies, right? Just fucking shit like that. You know what was so fucking overrated back then were devil dogs. You know, and every time I'd eat one, they were the driest. You had to, you had to drink like half a gallon of fucking milk to get those fucking things down, and um. I remember I would come home and the shows I used to watch was like, there was, there's a pretty obscure cartoon was on all the time. And just, it hasn't gotten any love over the years. It was a show called deputy dog. Hello, sheriff, the dog and the deputy dog. It was a fucking dog and it was a deputy. And then the sheriff was an actual person. And then he was always having problems with uh, 
was it Morocco Mole? No. What the fuck was it? There was Vince and, you know, yeah, don't go away. Musky. Musky Muskrat. That's what it was. Don't go away, mad Musky. Just go away. Um, let me see. Deputy Dog. I got to look this up here before I end the podcast. Deputy Dog. Uh, Deputy Dog. All right. Number of episodes. Oh, there was only 34 episodes. They used to show them all the fucking time. It aired from 1960 to 1963. Deputy Dog first ran weekly September 8th, 1962 to May 25th, 1963 with a brief hiatus in December. Each episode has Deputy Dog has a Deputy Dog cartoon followed by Dingback and then Silly Sydney. I don't remember that. The British television debut debut on BBC was in 1963. I just remember Deputy Dog. Deputy Dog is a deputy sheriff in Florida. A Florida dog. And the episode progressed. The location changed to Mississippi and later to Tennessee. Uh, the other, they, they were like, all right, we're not south enough. Then when they went to Mississippi, this is, this is too far south. Let's go in the middle. What's the middle ground of Mississippi and Florida? Tennessee. Um, that just sounds that's a fun name. Tennessee just sounds happy. I love that state. Um, one of the most beautiful fucking states I've ever been in. I fucking love Tennessee. The other man, the other main characters are the varmints, musky muskrat and moly mole, possibly possum, tycoon, Vincent Van Gopher. That's the one I remember. Not Moly Mole. I remember Vincent Van Gopher. Pig Newton and Dog's Boss Sheriff. I don't remember any of those guys. I just remember, help, Deputy Dog. I'm sinking in the creek mud. That's all I remember. A late ad- addition to the cast was Astronaut, a mischievous alien visitor. Oh, God. That was the end of every cartoon. That's like when the Flintstones had that stupid little green guy. Fucking over. Fucking over. Uh, much of the comedy is a sight gag. Deputy Dog later appeared in episodes of the 1987 series Mighty Mouse, The New Adventures. Yeah. There's only 34 episodes. Well, I definitely saw all of those. I would come home and eat nothing but fucking junk food. And I did not want to do any homework or any fucking thinking. Then I would go outside and play. And then the stress in my homework would start hitting me like around five. Like, ah, fuck, I got to do my homework. And I remember there was a couple friends I had that just had the discipline. They'd get off the bus. I'd be like, let's go out, let's go out and play. Let's play, you know, football, baseball. I mean, ride bikes or do some shit. I got to do my homework. And I'd be like, fuck that. All right. And then they'd come out around four o'clock and they'd be done with their homework. And I'd be like, ah, shit, I wish I was them. I wish I was them. And that's why I wasn't successful because back then I put shit off. But not now, not today. I think of a shit joke, I go right over and I write it there. As I call in sick to work. All right, anyway, that's the podcast, everybody. I'll let you know how the um, the uh, vaccine goes this week. We'll see. We'll see if I get it. They opened it up to entertainers. Um, it'd be funny if they watch my act. Yeah, you're not an entertainer. You're just a fucking angry orange man. Angry orange men are not qualified until uh august all right yeah okay that's it that's the podcast sorry don't mean to yawn to make you guys tired thank you to everybody that's been listening thank you to everybody that always listens and writes in and all of that stuff i love hearing from you guys and uh i don't know i'm feeling you can feel it man you can feel it we're turning the corner all right everybody's going to get this vaccine for the most part right and then it's just going to be uh we'll get to go back outside again you know That'll be it. That'll be it. And I've been saying this for a long time. All right? There's a lot of people you're going to look back fondly on all the time you had off from not going into work. You know? (laughs) I can tell you. I don't think it's going to be my first trip back to LAX. It might be. But my second trip to LAX, I might start crying. Okay? Okay? So if you guys see me there crying, just pretend you don't see me. Um, All right, that's it. All right, go fuck yourselves, and I'll check in on you on Thursday.